Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Scotland once again and we're going to go to Aberdeen where I used to study chemistry and have a look at a beer from two of, the, probably, well, probably the two best known breweries from up in the northeast of Scotland. So for this one we're going to go back to Brewdog who are from Ellen just in the countryside and outside of the city and we're having a taste of a beer that they did with Fierce Beer who are from Dice just in the northwestern part of the city. So for this one we're having a taste of the very big moose. This one is an imperial stout at 12%. It's been brewed with uh, Colombian cocoa, Madagascan vanilla and a little bit of, uh, of cinnamon as well. But this was a beer that they produced for the Collab Fest back in 2017 and it was apparently really really popular. From what I gather this one is a kind of amped up version of Fierce Beer's Moose Moose. So that's one that I still need to review from them. I've, you know, I've had quite a few beers from Fierce Beer. You know, they seem to really have a knack for the kind of stouts and, uh, and porters and things like that and one of the things with Brewdog as well you know I've criticised Brewdog's IPAs and stuff like that in the past because of the way the company's gone but their stouts and, and uh, porters and things like that at Brewdog have always remained a pretty good regardless of what's going on behind the scenes so I'm really interested to try this one and uh, see how we got on with it I'm sure it'll be a really quite interesting beer very highly rated on rate beer I think it was into well into the 90s when I checked it out and it was well into the four stars on Untapped as well so really looking forward to this one and as I always say I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website. It's the link to my other reviews that I've done, both from Brewdog and from Fierce Beer. You will see more in the near future. I've got some Fierce Beer ones in the back catalogue that you'll see uh, at some point fairly soon as well. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brewdog then. So as I've told you before, Brewdog was the love child of James Watt and Martin Dickey and they were founded back in 2007 and their first brewery was a very small one in the Keswick Industrial Estate in Fraserburgh in the very northeast part of Scotland, right at the tip of the monster's nose as I always like to say, but more recently they moved their main brewing operations to a new very shiny and purpose built facility in Ellen in Aberdeenshire which like I said is just a little bit to the north of the city of Aberdeen where I used to study chemistry. But these guys were largely inspired by the American craft brewing renaissance. They often cite stone brewing as, uh, as one of their main influences and it used to be that if you tried uh, punk IP you could compare that to the Stone IPA and you really actually could see um, where that influence was coming from. But these days they've got several pubs throughout um, all over the place now. Actually the first of those opened back in 2010 with their one at uh, Aberdeen just next to Marshall College. They've now got a second bar at the Castlegate in Aberdeen as well but they spread into down to Edinburgh and Glasgow uh, the following year and then they've spread all across England since then. They've got bars as far away as Tokyo, they've got their second brewery now over in um, in Columbus in Ohio and they've got a bar down in Brazil as well. I think the one in Sao Paulo and the one in Tokyo, those are the ones that are furthest away as well but they're always opening up new things over there and um, they're, as I say, they've got a second brewery in Columbus, Ohio. They've also started distilling spirits as well which are released under the name Lone Wolf. They've done some gin so far and I think they're still waiting for the whiskey um, to do its three years in the casks and they've also just finished building their overworks which is producing sour beers for them as well and I think the first beers are starting to uh, you know roll off the production line at the moment. The Brewdog Overworks is actually um, going to attend the Brewskival which I'll be going to in a couple of weeks time or uh, you may see this video actually at the time that we're at Brewskival, who knows, but the Overworks are producing sour beers and I've yet to actually try anything from the Overworks so I'm very interested to see how that turns out but Brewdog, you know, they're probably the ones that put um, the Scottish craft beer on the map and there's a lot of little breweries that have come after them that have kind of been inspired by them and as I've told you before I have criticised what's going on uh, from a business perspective when it comes to Brewdog but you know they're still producing some pretty damn good stouts and porters and things like that the, I the quality of the IPAs I think has dropped a little bit um, but as I say we'll see how we get on with this one we're not here to talk too much about the business side of things we're here mainly to talk about the beer but if you want to learn a little bit more about Brewdog check out their website and you can also have a look at their Facebook as well so any Pardon me. Anyway, on to the other side of the brew then, on to Fierce Beer. 
Now, as I mentioned to you earlier, Fierce Beer are based in Dyson, Aberdeen, and they began life as the home brewing experiments of David Grant, who'd worked in the oil industry for many, many years. And he'd been home brewing since uh, March 2013. And after hosting a kind of beer and food pairing uh, dinner, if you like, at his house, he, his beers got really, really good feedback. So he decided to bite the bullet and turn professional. So this was back in May 2015. And um, actually, he's joined at the brewery now as well by Dave McGarry, who also worked in the oil industry for a number of years but he used his redundancy package to put himself on a brewing course at Brew Lab in Sunderland. So in April 2016 they moved into their brewery in the Kirkhill Industrial Estate in Dice which is to the northwest of Aberdeen, very close to Aberdeen Airport of course and at the moment they can brew up to 800,000 litres of beer per year. They started canning their beers in early 2018 as well and they've now got their own bar on Ship Row in Aberdeen which is called the Fierce Bar. It's just kind of round the corner actually from uh, Brew Dog's Castlegate Bar and it's really nice actually. The guys that work in there are really really nice it's you know your typical kind of a uh, craft beer pub in there but they've got lots of different things from fears that i think a lot of them are actually um keg only and things if you like because they do like to experiment a lot they're experiment a lot with kind of fruit sours and things like that at the moment most of the beers when i were in when i was in there were uh, like berry sours and fruit sours berliner vices and stuff like that but like i say these guys have got a bit of a knack for um for brewing porters and stouts and things like that. I think that's where Fierce Beer really shine, but they are starting to play around with the sour beers as well. But at the moment, they're looking for a new site in the city because they want to move uh, into the city centre and have a big brewery and restaurant type premises. And there's a few in old industrial buildings in the centre of town that might actually do them for that. So it'll be interesting to see how they do going forward. But personally, I would say that uh, Fierce Beer are kind of doing quite a good job of filling the gap that Brewdog have kind of left in Aberdeen when it comes to craft beer. There's also Six Degrees North from um, from Stonehaven as well, but they specialise primarily in the production of, uh, of Belgian beers. They do some really good stuff as well. So Aberdeen really is a bit of a craft beer hub when it comes to uh, the northeast of Scotland. There's really good breweries out in Speyside and over towards Inverness and things like that as well. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Fierce Beer for the moment. Again, check out their website in the description below and you can follow them on Facebook and stuff like that. But they are quite a prolific brewery. Like I was saying though, most of their, their experimental beers, if you like, can be found in the Fierce, um, the Fierce Bar. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this one then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up. There you can see, nicely presented this. This is the, the kind of modern style that Brewdog have when it comes to their collaboration beers. It says on the side here, very big mousse. As Imperial Stouts go, this is one of, the, this is one of Saris proportions. Rich, thick and... Uh, Airmen Smooth. This collab fest winner is bottled decadence for the people. A mix of dark malts gives a well-rounded body that is decidedly chocolatey with notes of vanilla, cinnamon, cocoa and chocolate on the nose. A sweet and chewy taste with roasted malts, chocolate and vanilla. Very big mousse. Imperialism comes of age. It tells you a little bit about Fierce Beer and also a little bit about Brewdog as well. You can have a little look at that there. It's also got all the export and import things for China and for... Oh wait, that's the Japanese ones there. Should have seen that, should have recognised the can of the, um, canna there. But there you can see it, there's the Brewdog bottle cap on this one. Nicely presented, as I say, 12% Imperial Stout brewed with Colombian cocoa, Madagascan vanilla and a little bit of cinnamon. So without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm really looking forward to this. So yeah, nice smoky opening there and we'll get it out and into the glass. You can smell the vanilla and the chocolate off this one as you open it up. Look at that. That looks lovely. So nice big dark ebony rosewood kind of colour beer this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass but you can see quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. There's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say quite dark um, tan head on that one. You can see the colour of that head there. Just look at that. But yeah, really nice looking beer. There's actually a good hint of fruit coming off this one as well, which is quite interesting. I've just got a big waft of a kind of red, um, almost quite tart fruit, you know, out of this beer. But you know, it looks pretty much as you would expect from an imperial style. It looks like a lovely, lovely beer. And you can see on the pour, and you can see when you sort of swirl it around, you can see how oily that beer is. There's a lot of booze in this one, you know, at 12% it is a bit of a beast. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Just as I'm moving the beer around, there's a lot of brown sugar and chocolate coming off of this one. But let's see how we get on. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. It's when you sugar it up that you start to get a lot more complexity out of it, I would say. So yeah, nice dark sort of treacle 
molasses type thing coming out of this beer. There is a little bit of a sweeter caramel, some biscuity notes as well. Nice sweet chocolate, sort of a, the chocolate in this one, it's interesting because there is an element of that kind of high cocoa sort of thing about it, you know, the 80-90% cocoa. But the vanilla, you can pick out the vanilla of this one and that makes it seem as if it's a little bit more milky. So yeah, definitely the vanilla comes out of this one. Nice, dark, as I say, nice dark chocolate to it. Dark brown sugars as well. Yeah, really nice smelling beer this. A little bit of a nutty quality to it as well, like on the back end of the nose. I think there's a good little bit of nutty quality there. A little bit of red fruit coming out as well. Yeah, nice little bit of red fruit. It's got that dark kind of um, almost... It's not, I want to say plums. It's got a little bit of a plummy quality to it, this one, but it's also got a, a kind of little bit of that kind of phenol quality to it as well. It's got a little bit of that kind of um, almost medicinal note coming out of it, but definitely some nice red fruits to this beer. A little bit of earthy hop, I would say, but not too much. It really is the kind of sweeter malty notes that are coming out of this beer. But overall, the aroma it leans towards that chocolate side of things. You can definitely pick up the vanilla in it as well. But overall, it does smell really quite nice. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I'm quite excited to try this one now. So let's get stuck in. So this one is the Very Big Moose, a collaboration beer between Brewdog from Ellen, just outside the city in Aberdeenshire, and Fierce Beer, who are from Dice, just to the kind of northwest of the city. This one, as I say, is a bit of an amped up version of their Moose Moose, if you like. So let's get stuck into this beer then. Slange it, skull. That's really quite interesting that you'll feel with this beer as soon as you take it in. It's got a big boozy kick to it, but it really suits it. Yeah, that is a bit of a monster. I have to say, it's really interesting how everything kind of goes together in this beer. So let's just try and break it down a little bit. As I always say though, with these big dark beers, take a little bit of time and sugar the beer around your palate and just let your whole mouth adjust to it before you start um, before you, you start analysing it too much. So yeah. With this one, you can feel there is a little element of that roasty black malt there. That just blankets the middle of your tongue. On top of that, though, you start to get these other malty qualities. You can feel that nice cocoa flavour there. That just sits on top of your palate and just balances it out really quite nicely. Yeah, you can feel that. It's got that lovely big... It's almost like an oily chocolate there. You can feel that just blanketing, you know, just sitting on top of that roasty black malt. Right in the middle of your palate, there's a nice little bit of a kind of treacle, molasses, dark brown sugar sort of thing sitting there. As you go further out towards the sides of your tongue, I think it just lightens up a little bit and becomes a little bit more sort of caramelly. And um, Maybe there's even a little touch of biscuit just as you get out towards the very edges of your tongue. If you come further forward, I think there's a little bit of a kind of nutty note in there. And as you go further and further into the aftertaste of this one, the cinnamon kind of starts to come out as well. The vanilla for me isn't so obvious in this beer. I mean, you can pick it up, you pick it up towards the front of the tongue, the vanilla and the kind of nutty notes actually, are going together quite well. It's not just, I'm, I'm saying it's not obvious, but it wasn't quite as obvious as I was expecting it to be. That's probably the better thing to say. But the vanilla notes in this beer, um, they come out more towards the front of the tongue with the, the slightly nutty flavours, I would say. But in the middle of your palate, as I say, it's the, um, it's the kind of dark chocolate and sort of treacly molasses kind of things that are coming out of this beer. The malt base is where it's at and you really can feel just a little bit of, uh, of alcohol warmth from this one which is really nice. But 
but yeah, that's a really nice, a nice taste in beer. This one, there's a lot going on in this. It's actually, I mean, it's not the the most complex of imperial stouts that you're going to get, but it's more about how all these ingredients kind of mix together well. I mean, the cinnamons in there, the kind of chocolatey elements are coming out really well. And the vanilla just infuses in really nicely. You've got a little bit of the nutty and brown sugary elements to it in there as well, which works for it. But it's, it's a really nice beer, this one, you know. Both breweries in this have done a good job. Like I say, Fierce Beer have a knack for doing the likes of stouts and porters and things. And Brewdog, the quality of their stouts and, uh, and things has, has always been pretty good. I mean, if you go to the Paradox series, um, you know, the, the Riptide was one of my favourite sweet stouts back in the day. I was quite disappointed when they got rid of that out of their core range. I always loved the Riptide beer from Brewdog. And that's, you know, they've been very consistent in their porters and stouts, I would say, over the last couple of years. But it's 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 definitely a good beer, this one. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of things, then it is pretty much what you'd expect. Back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there. That kind of spreads forward a little bit. And it comes along, it just smooths out before you get to the front corners of the palate, then around the very front curve of the tongue, you've got a little bit of a lighter kind of uh, grassy note in there as well. Yeah, and then as you just go behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those nice, juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. So for me, this one's given a little bit of a kind of... It's interesting. It's got a little bit of that kind of plummy red fruit, but at the same time, it's got this kind of... Um, almost medicinal quality and then um, there was a brewer was telling me that's the phenols that kind of give that out so I need to do a bit, a bit of research into the chemistry of how all of that works because you know I'm a, I was a chemist by trade and then turned into an astrophysicist spectroscopist type thing but the, the way that the fe I was told that these kind of medicinal flavours that you get from like Belgian brewings and uh, sometimes in the quadruples and things like that as well and the, the dubels you get it's this kind of phenolic quality and you get a little touch of that from this one with the way the red fruits are coming out Yeah, I mean, it's almost got a little bit of a cakey quality to it, this beer, like an alcoholic cake, if that makes sense. But yeah, nice medicinal red fruity qualities in there. As I say, I think there's a bit of a, a kind of prune, um, plummy sort of thing to this one. It's uh, And then as you go further into the flavour, it gradually becomes a little bit more kind of um, medicinal, if that makes sense. It's a little bit more of that kind of cough syrupy type quality. As you go further into the aftertaste as well, the cinnamons kind of lingering there and some of the chocolate and vanilla really starts to come out as well. A little bit of the earthiness is lingering too, but overall it's a really interesting beer this one. Like I say, both breweries have a bit of a, a knack when it comes to, to darker beers I would say. In terms of the mouthfeel then, definitely a full bodied beer. The carbonation is very, very smooth on this one. It's a big oily mouthfeel I would say. Nice little bit of hoppy bitterness. Sweet, um, it's got a good little bit it's got a big bit of malty sweetness actually, I'm seeing a little bit, it's a big sweet malty beer this one. The cinnamon does give it a little touch of spice I would say, which is quite an interesting addition to it. Nice juicy fruity notes, it's got a little bit of that kind of medicinal quality as well. And uh, there's some a little bit of juicy fruity note in there also, which is really nice. It's, it's kind of got everything you want, this is one of these more kind of experimental um, Imperial Stouts, but I can see why it won the collab fest. It really is uh, a top quality beer, this one. So, you know, let's leave it at that. Just a really, really good beer from two breweries that are pretty damn good at brewing stouts, and there's not much more you can ask for. So, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. So, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Brewdog and from Fierce Beer. And uh, you know, let me know if there's if what the moose moose is like. I think I need to get a hold of that from uh, from Fear Spear and have a review as well. But you will see at some point very soon the cafe racer and the imperial cafe racer um, from Fear Spear. If I don't put them up before this video, but glad I was able to review this one. This was part of the small partiers on the third of August uh, through Sistenbolaga in Sweden. But a really nice beer this one. And thank you again for watching. We'll catch you guys very soon. The very big moose, a collaboration between Brewdog and Fear Spear, both kind of from the Aberdeen area in the northeast of Scotland. Until the next time, it's Lange just now and I will catch you guys very soon. Skull.